Okay, good morning. <laughs> Typical. That's another subject. Visual, maybe visual programming? I think it's there. That's not there. You are forcefully sent here to take my subject. Huh? That's the case. So there should be another subject. Visual programming? No? Then I'll arrange that. From next week at least, I'll be able to get uh, see half of your batch. Okay, uh, so we'll move to the, uh, the subject. And actually, yesterday, I'm mean before that, yesterday uh, we gave you a formal introduction to the, the department. And uh, you got to know the staff as well. Anybody who have uh, ever heard about me? No. If one can uh, talk five minutes about me, I'm going to give him, uh, him or her five marks at the final exam. <laughs> Why? Five minutes for five marks, I mean. That's a fair idea. Anybody, any, any volunteer who wants to get uh, school five marks at the exam? No one? Huh? Anyone who have ever seen me or heard about me before you come into civil engineering department? You can raise your hands. One, two. There are many. Oh, how did you know about me? Uh, ah, you were there. Okay. Something else, right? I thought you know about uh, bad on me, right? Fine. Okay. Uh, so you know about the department now, you know about the, uh, the staff, you know what is happening at civil engineering department. And you had how many lectures now? How many lecturers taught you now? Yesterday you had uh, Professor Kuswavila. He did one subject. No. This is no, this is yes. No. Right. So who are the lecturers you met yesterday? Huh? I don't like this. Talk loudly. Yes? Huh? Tell me. The tall guy, at least, you know. Who? Who are the lecturers? What are the subjects at least? Huh? Sorry? Basic thermal science. Who taught? Someone from civil. Mechanical, right. From civil? Then the next subject? Maths tutorial. That's from maths. Then so any, any civil engineering uh, subjects you? This is the first one. How sad you are. So my, uh, my objective was to send at least half of you from my subject, but now you can decide whether you are going to stay with civil engineering or not after my lecture. Right. Since this is the first, sub, first subject you are going to, you are ever getting. Uh, at civil engineering department, right. So you, you can judge uh, where you are going to go. Right. Uh, okay, so you don't know what civil engineering department even though you got the, the formal introduction. I'll give you, uh, I'll take five minutes and explain you what is civil engineering department. Now this is a civil engineering department even though this, when I say this is a civil engineering, it is not the civil engineering department. Now it is scattered everywhere. We have research, uh, one building called research center and there's another building called Madandan Singh and there's another building uh, behind uh, close to the uh, the boatyard that is a uh, payment testing lab like you know it is scattered everywhere now. Previously at the very beginning of this particular university we had mechanical and civil engineering they all and electrical they all hosted that Sumanadasa building. You know Sumanadasa building? That big building, old building so it was there. Then uh, I think uh, 79, 78 uh, they started uh, this building. So we had this building. So I entered here in year 2000, 2016. 16 years ago, I was here as a student in this class. Uh, after that, we got a uh, few buildings. One is the research center, then we got the, uh, the Majandan Singh building, and then re recently we got this uh, payment design lab. It's again another division. And uh, civil engineering department is almost like a, a sort of a faculty which we have different division even though we don't like to call them as division anymore. Because more we divided, we are going down every day. Civil department even though you think you know it is the number third, 
myself i believe it is the last department in the in the in the university now which we are going down down every day industry is booming up just because of that you you are here not because no, none of you went to civil engineering department website anybody before you selecting civil engineering department anybody who went and browsed uh, go through the civil engineering website oh you are good anybody else only one how many how many students in your batch 140 you don't know 100 128 you said 140 128 right okay 128 out of 128 one has went through civil engineering department website before you selecting civil engineering fine great it's great i mean it's really great so he at least knew a reason to come to civil engineering department right so uh, i mean anyway when i was a student i had no choice like you know i, I wanted to I, I had a dream to become a civil engineer, so I forcefully, I, I sort of, you know, myself, I forced to come and do civil engineering. So I came and enter and finally ended as a civil engineer here. So that's my, that's my journey at civil engineering department. So if you think of civil engineering, I don't, I'm not going to talk to him because he, he knows about the, the structure. We have different divisions. I told you it's like a faculty. So we have, uh, yeah, altogether we have seven divisions. Um, from uh, construction management and engineering division that is just below uh, this lecture room. If you go to the first uh, first floor, you have a timber door like this, then you enter, you have the construction engineering management division. That is one. You have the structures division, we have geotextile, we have hydraulics, we have transport, we have environment, what else? Yeah, we'll say six. So we have six. Six divisions and uh, you are not, even though we have six divisions, you are not divided into six uh, compartments anymore. But that, that was the arrangement. You, you could get a construction management minor, you could get a structural minor, so that was there. But now, no longer there. It's there now. So, uh, so you are studying, basically, all these divisions are offering subjects to you. These divisions are made, basically, targeting research, but unfortunately, not not the, the civil engineering, not either even uh, Moroti University, the state, in, entire state education, the state universities are going down just because they are not doing research. So no longer this division concept is valid to civil engineering department anymore. So we are, we are trying to leave from this, this division concept and coming back and working as a, trying to come and work as a department even though we are, it's really hard because, you know, uh, layman's, it's very, very easy to put them into a uh, place and they can they can group easy easily but the intellectuals the professionals it's very difficult because they have their personal egos very very difficult to keep two lecturers in the same room very difficult you will not be able to even find the tail very difficult so that is what is uh, the current state of the civil engineering department uh, this is the first subject we are offering from construction management uh, uh, division that my division and uh, i told you i think we have uh, seven staff members out of them two of yes two uh, vice chancellors from actually three vice chancellors we created three vice chancellors from civil and out of them two are from my division professor anand javadana the former vice chancellor and the, uh, the, the 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 person before him was professor malik rana singh he's from my division now he's in ugc the, the commission and uh, I told you, I mean, it's basically on management. But management is very, very essential uh, in civil engineer's life. You mean, you may want to be a good structural engineer, fine. Yes, you can be a structural engineer, but the industry, I mean, as a country, we are going down every day. You know that I don't have to explain what is really happening at the country level. Uh, and thanks to that, Thanks to the uh, the politicians and the, polit the country politics, we are going down, and that is badly affecting the civil engineering profession. I'm telling this because you need to put this particular point in your mind on the very first day. When we were graduating, we were the best. We were the best, no doubt. I mean, the industry was waiting till a batch from water to a passing out. Not even civil, all the other disciplines the industry was waiting. But now the situation is very, very difficult and different. 
The reason is industry has changed a lot. They don't need engineers. They don't need engineers. Computer, they don't need computer engineers. Civil, you don't need computer in, uh, civil engineers. Electrical, they don't need uh, electrical engineers. So they can do the same job which the engineers are doing by a technical officer. So why they are spending 100,000 or 200,000 to recruit a engineer when they can get the same job done by a technical officer? So we have a, you have a huge problem when you are graduating. That is number one. The number two, let's say you have very few limited uh, vacancies in the field and that was looked by many uh, graduates from all over the country. You have state. In our case, we had only three faculties, Moratua, Ruhuna, and uh, Peradeniya. Now, how many faculties? For your batch? Huh? Sorry? Six? Is it six? Moratua, Peradeniya, Ruhuna, Chardhanapura, then you have Southeastern and Chaftan. Yes. You have six. Any more? No. Yeah, six faculties. Is that all? No, you are, you are getting the competition from the private sector, private universities as well. How much you hate them? No other option. You have to go and compete with them and show that you are the best and you are the cream of the cream. Because I felt and I am always feeling these private universities, the graduates are more suitable to the industry than state engineering, state university graduates. When I say this, I know you are not happy to hear that, but that is the real truth. I am a person who never teach in private universities. That is my professional practice. I do not want to go and, you know, while I am getting a uh, the salary from this university, I do not want to spend my time in a private university. That is my personal belief. I mean, that is my personal, personal ethics. But I personally believe, I am telling this at the very first day, I personally believe we should have to have the private education in the country. When I say this, again, you are not happy with me. I'm telling that not because I don't I want to promote private universities, but to promote state universities. Unless someone come and challenge these state universities, we are going down every day. You check the, uh, the international status of all these state universities, you can see every day, every year, we are going down. Why? Why? Can, can someone uh, tell me why are we going down every day? Is that because of the, the country economy? Is that because of, you know, we are losing uh, the natural resources? No, we don't work. We get the salary and we don't work. We can't blame you. I mean, you, you came here to get the job done and you want to leave here as soon as possible with a degree. But to survive in the industry, you have to keep the, the university name up. You should be able to and 10 years down the line, you should be able to go to the industry and say, yes, you know, look at this, I'm, I'm a graduate from University of Moratua. To say that this University of Moratua should exist. If that is not there, you can't, you can't proudly say you are, you are a graduate from University of Moratua. Can you get my point? Right? For that, you need to have the challenge from these private universities. Unless these private universities come and challenge the state universities, every day we are going down. The corruption to the sky now, misuse of public funds to the sky, I am openly telling this, because these universities are funded by whom? By America, you know? By UK, or at least India, or Maldives, or Bangladesh. Huh? Who is funding? Who is funding for these universities? At least you know that. Huh? Who is funding? Funding by you, right? My salary is basically funded by you, your parents. You are not earning, but you are eating, right? If you are eating, that means you are, you are basically spending for us. If you forget this particular fact, you are doing a real damage to this particular country. Unless you get the value of the, the free education, and if you think the free education is sort of a right you have, then you are not bound to serve back to the country. What will happen? You get the degree and you sleep at the class. Isn't it? Huh? That same, not everybody. Right. So, I mean, unless you get to know your responsibility, 
right? More you educate, more you get the, the state funding, more you get the, uh, the, the poor's uh, tax money, your shoulders are every day becoming heavier and heavier. Why? You are getting additional responsibility on your shoulders, that is to pay back, pay them back. If you forget it, it's very simple, it's very simple. Everybody, those who are fighting at the street, they think the state or the free education is a right. No, it is not a right. It is a given responsibility on your shoulders, right? If you forget your responsibility, that is what has happened to the state universities, you will graduate and the you, some of you will come and join as, a, as state university lecturers and they will think their job salary is a right. No, it's not a right. It is a responsibility. More I get the salary, I'm more responsible to save, to save to this particular university and save to the country. But I don't do because I don't know the, the responsibility of getting my public fun, funded uh, salary and you know spending my time happily at my home. So you people should know your responsibility. If you forget it, you will get the degree and you will be just humans with nothing. You can earn a lot, you can, you can do everything, but will not be able to create a real human who's living on your heart, in your heart. Very difficult. We can create engineers, we can create doctors. Simple, it's really nothing. It's really, really nothing. To create a doctor, if you want to become a MBBS uh, graduate, you don't have to come to Columbia University. You go to, you take your mobile phone, you will be able to get a world class uh, MBBS degree. Even, even MBBS degree, even you take engineering, it's really nothing. You can get a degree from anywhere in the world through online uh, courses, but that can make an engineering graduate, right? You, you are not a graduate degree holder, but to become a real graduate, that's a big meaning. That's a big meaning. You can't become a graduate. You can't just become a graduate by keeping, holding a degree certificate. You can, we can create degree holders, really nothing. Semester one, you passed. Semester two, definitely you will be passing. 3, 4, 5, up to 8, you'll be passing and you'll be getting the degree certificate. But that doesn't sense anything unless you get the real university life. When I say university life, it is not just getting the degree. Please note that. University life is, I mean, over and above this degree certificate. Keep that in mind. You have a lot to do within this particular four years' time in the university. If you just concentrate your degree, fine, you can be a degree holder, right? You can be one of them with Rakia. With a job, you can be a degree holder, but you can't be a graduate. You can't proudly say you are a graduate because you have not spent your university life in the university. Getting degrees, let's say, 10% of your university life. There are a lot. There are a lot where you can earn from this particular university. I'm always repeating this. These, you know, we don't have universities in this particular country anymore. We don't have universities. These are all teaching institutes. You know the difference between a school and a university? Can someone tell me? A difference between a school and a university? No idea? Any, any idea? What is the difference between a school and a university? School, what do you read? Huh? What do you read as a school? Huh? You spend one semester semester at the University of Morotu now, so you should be able to judge the similarities and the, uh, the, the the matching points between the school life and the university life. What do you read at the school? You study, huh? The lecture or the, the teacher came and explained uh, the note set, done. Uh, you set for the exam, okay, done. Passed the A-level, done. You came to University of Marutu. Huh? At least that is right, I believe. Okay, after that, you came to University of Marutu, very first day, what was happened? There were a set of people like the school, they welcomed you, okay? They introduced each other. From next day, you never arrived. I believe again, okay. So from the next day, you started learning and there was a person who coming at the, uh, at the front 
was talking and talking about the lecture material you set for the semester 1 exam done and you enter to the civil engineering department again that is done you got the formal welcome yesterday and from today onwards you are getting the the full set of lecture notes so what is the difference between a school and a, the university tell me what's the difference any difference any single difference forget the size forget the the environment the feeling you get as a school student and a university student what is the difference any single difference you could ever find between uh, the school life and the the university life if you can't don't stay here <laughs> you have many other places to get the go and get the same uh, same qualification i mean don't ever think you 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 can proudly say you are you are graduated from university model to when you are graduating forget it that will be out there will be many other universities coming and overtaking us so forget it so you tell me the difference between the school life and the university life so without knowing that you came here no idea no idea no no idea really sir so i'm talking to a set of people who doesn't know the the difference between school life and the university life okay i'll give you another one more additional week for you to study what you should do with when you are in the university if you still believe you are supposed to get the degree i feel sorry for you because i'm a person who who got the maximum out of this particular university life that's why i'm i'm enjoying and i i really want to have the same university life university culture throughout that's why i'm always fighting to get the same and give the same so you, you go go and learn and go and feel the university life that is very very difficult and different to the school life if you're trying to say you know have the same university the school culture in the university system you out you out you will be a just a degree holder not a graduate so i'll give you one more week i'm going to ask the same question next week till i uh before i start the the lecture i'm moving to my topic building design process and application i told you this optional and non gpa what is the meaning of non gpa non gpa gpa and non gpa what is the difference anybody at least at least show your hand uh, raise your hands and say that you know you know the difference who doesn't know the difference okay then everybody knows the difference between gpa and non gpa what's the difference what's the difference you don't know no you are not looking at me anybody from the center tell me what's the difference gpa and non gpa you okay when you are calculate the final gpa right these subjects are not added whatever the grade you get it will be shown in the the transcript but nothing will happen to your gpa gpa matters for what to get the the class calc when you are calculating the uh, uh, the class then gpa really matters but this this subject whether i mean you have to pass to graduate but don't worry about getting a plus or c or whatever because just by getting a c you will be able to graduate and you can still hold the same class you are you are, you are going to get so this is a non gpa optional subject and there's another optional subject in the same time right uh, i will uh, i will out outline you uh, the subject today and from uh, next week onwards you are going to start the the real subject this is the whole uh, content of the the subject i'm going to talk about planning uh, of buildings then the subject is building design process and application so there's another similar subject on building construction so you, there should be a difference between these two subject offered at the same level same semester here we talk about the design aspects of 
building elements right and interestingly after this particular point up to this point or even rather beyond going beyond and up to the, the, uh, the assignment 1 and assignment 2 they are all done by yourself. I am going to uh, give you a small introduction and I am going to take one or two key uh, modules but the rest of the modules are basically done by yourself. Confusing I know. I will, I will, I uh, will go into the next uh, breakdown. This is the, the entire lesson plan for the subject. You have, uh, you have 14 weeks and every week we have uh, 4 uh, hours, right? We are still here, rather we lost here but I am going to take up to this particular time slot and finish my first session. And you can see I am going to talk about the engineering drawing, first angle and third angle, oblique projection I am going to I am going to do and uh, on that day I am going to start the rather actually today we are going to start this assignment 2 but uh, a, a basic introduction. Assignment 2 will be proceeding from the, the third week and uh, the fourth week the first slot I am going to take and after that you can see there is assignment call building foundation bit interesting. I told you this is not a normal lecture, right? If you if you ever thought of you know uh, receiving a ordinary level ordinary lecturer coming coming and giving you a printed note set and asking questions from the note set at the the final exam, please note that this is not going to happen that way, right? This is not an ordinary lecture. Bit tough, very complicated. I am telling very, very complicated, repeating very, very complicated. If anybody feel like skipping the subject, you are more than willing to do because I need to have a lesser number of students in my class. That was my first uh, hope from the very first day when I introduced this particular subject about uh, five, six years ago. I wanted to have about 30, 40 students but unfortunately the entire batch took my subject till today at least from this week, this year if I can succeed my dream that is something great I can never think of achieving in my life. So up to you, right? up to you. Okay, now you can see everywhere it is all about assignments, all about assignments. So I will take this particular point, say assignment 1 building foundations, I will take this uh, assignment 2 later. But assignment 1, let us say building foundation, so this is how it is going to happen. Say group number 1, you have the attendant list, you will be divided into 10 groups. Let us take the first uh, 10 slot, uh, the first uh, group. So they are supposed to do this particular subject, not me. I will be one of you. I will be a student and those 10 or 12 uh, or 13 people will be standing here and delivering the lecture. Really funny, right? What is this <laughs> mad person is talking? No, it is it's going to happen. It is going to happen, right? From next week, not really next week, uh, the third week onward, you are going to be a lecturer. I am going to be a student for 10 weeks. I am going to sit at the back. So the person who is presenting should be able to talk until I hear his voice. First try, I will not be able to hear then either he should raise his, he or she should raise the voice or else should move to the, the center. Whatever the way I need to hear his voice or her voice to give the marks or to, to proceed the, the class. Okay, now this particular, interesting, yes, really funny. Okay, let us say the foundation. So the foundation lecture will be done by the group number 1, the first 13 or 12 students, right? And they are supposed to make the presentation with me. I will be one of them until they come to the stage. So let us say group na, uh, the third week, 
the group number 1 should do this particular presentation. So, at least by the second week of Tuesday that is next Tuesday they should be ready with the presentation. Those who are the, the first lot be ready if not you leave the class then I can reshuffle the, the groups. The first set they should be able to make the, the foundation lecture. So, they are supposed to make a PowerPoint presentation and a note set. Right? The knowledge is everywhere now. You get your mobile phone, you will be able to find anything and everything. Right? Anything and everything. Some are useful, some are not useful. But anything and everything. But here, you are supposed to make the, uh, the presentation. There can be things which are not really known to you because you are, not, you, you are the very first few weeks of uh, civil engineering. So, some of the things are not really known to you. Then, you have to come on the first group I am talking, uh, I am referring to the first group, you have to come on uh, next Tuesday or before that and show me the presentation and get the facts clear. Say you have 100, uh, 120 slides, you have 12 uh, uh, students at the group, then you need to give equal portion to each, each and every uh, student in the group, right? This is how it is going to happen. So, you come with the presentation and you are you are making or finalizing the presentation with me, done and by at least 7 days prior to your presentation, you are ready with your presentation, right. You are ready with your presentation, all 10 or 12 people in the, in the, uh, in the group should know each and every point of the presentation, okay. Then the, the following week, those 12 will come and stand on the stage, not sit, the stand on the stage. Do they know the order of the presentation, order of the, the, the presentation uh, chain? No, they do not know. Not the first who is going to do the first slide, no, that is not the way. So, once they go to the stage, I am going to give them a small piece of sheet with the order. It is not a piece of sheet, it is A4 sheet, right? A4 sheet. So, you have the name list and the, the order is nicely printed. And there is another cache, right? There is another cache where you can evaluate your contribution to the presentation. I am not going to check your English, I am not going to check your presentation skill, but I am going to check your confidence your confident level, right. Do not ever think I am here to check your English, do not ever think I am here to check your presentation skills. But understand engineering is all about communication, engineering is all about communication. If you are failing communication, you are a real failure in engineering life. You need to be a 100 percent perfect communicator to become a, specially to become a civil engineer. Let us say you know everything, you know everything, but you cannot communicate that to the, the mason who is doing the, the construction, you are out. At the same time, right, at the same time, let us say you know everything and you know how to use the computer, but still the person who is at the side does not know how to use a computer, you are out. Let us say you are, you, are, you want to uh, give a detail, let us say this particular junction you want to give the, the correct detail to the person who is making or the building, then you should be able to get a piece of brick and draw that on the uh, on a uh, the blind uh, wall. So, that particular skill has to be there with you to become a good civil engineer. It is not about calculation, it is not about uh, big theories, it is about all communication. If you are a good communicator, um, um, I have the gut feeling, I am 100 percent sure you can become a good civil engineer in the field. I told you the private university, the graduates are much better than you. I am criticizing you, I am repeating, I am criticizing you for you to learn and beat them soon, not one day soon. Very recently, I went to Saitam uh, just before they changed the name to SLT. They had a conference, I was, uh, uh, I was you know, in, a, in, a, in a panel 
we had two from Morado University who's presenting their research work. Perfect. The research was perfect, perfectly done, but they couldn't do the presentation well. There were three from Slate and one from uh, Saitem, all together six presenters for that particular session, and that four haven't done anything. I'm repeating anything, but they presented well. I mean, that is what the market wants. That is what the industry wants. They know this much, but they can make it this much with their communication. But our people, they know more than that, but then they're, when they're presenting, it is even this much. We are out. We are thrown out at any, I mean, you, you talk about any, any you talk to any, any uh, industry expert, you talk to uh, the big companies, they will tell you the same, same fact. They, 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 are, they are picking the, uh, the knowledge now, right? They don't get the cream. We get the cream. We get the cream of the cream and we send the cream out. We don't do any value addition. But these private universities, they get the raw dirt and finally what they do? They work hard and do a real value addition and send a real good person to the industry. That is what they do. But if you just compare the value addition of a private university University and a state university, we are really doing nothing. We are doing nothing compared to the private universities. That's what I'm telling you. You are the cream of the cream, right? You are the cream of the cream, no doubt, and you are leaving as the cream of the cream, but we haven't done anything. So if you want to be a real engineer in the, in the field, make sure you are good with communication, right? That's why all these 10 topics from this point to this point are done by you, not by me, right? So you are going to do, you are going to become a lecturer for at least 10 minutes. I mean, very, very second semester or the very first semester in the civil engineering department, you are a lecturer. We never got this that particular opportunity when we were students. Unfortunately, we became lecturers, <laughs> We never got. Right, so you are going to get that particular experience. So let's say take the, the same uh, topic you are going to, I'm repeating, I'm, I'm summarizing the, the whole, uh, whole uh, story about the assignment. So you will be getting the topic, and the topic will be presented as a team, a group. You are the people who are making the presentation, you are the people who are making the, uh, the, sli uh, the slideshow and the, uh, the note set, but you have a, uh, I mean, 152 page uh, full document uh, uh, note set for, for you to re refer. And I mean, I don't mind copying. You can copy from your seniors. I don't mind. You do it. I also did. Even now I do. But copying, the way you do and the way I do, I'm very sure it is different. What is copying? It is not really copying and pasting. You people, you know, copy and paste. If you want to be a real smart copier, smart copy in person, you copy, put it here, make it yourself, and then paste. Then you know the fact, and that is yours. And you put the creativity, and you paste. That is not belongs to him after that. If you just copy and paste, nothing will be going here or here. But you copy, you put it here, you make it yourself, you put the creativity, and you paste. That will be something new, something novel, something innovative. Do that. You take the uh, the senior's presentation. You take the note set. You take everything. You 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 can you can you know browse the internet and you can get any number of knowledge. There are a lot of knowledge in the internet, and you can simply copy from your seniors as well. Fine. When I say put it here, it is not to change the uh, the presentation graphics. It's really easy. You change the animation, you change the uh, the design. Fine. You can you can make it make it different. You can you can think of it. I mean, there are two things you can learn at the university. Either you can learn the subject, or else you can learn to cheat. Very easy. I'm always welcome people who are willing to cheat me, because I'll be able to learn something new. And Block that loophole as well. Because I'm a person who did everything. I told you, you know, on the very first day, I did everything in this particular university from sky to the, the heaven, right? I did everything, all possible ways. 
I cheated, I know I went through for the lecturer and I did everything. I enjoyed my life, university life to the maximum. That's why I'm here. And I love to get more and more new tips from you. You try to cheat me, it's for my knowledge. If I can found it, find it, I'm a winner. If I not be able to find the uh, find whether you are cheating or not, you think you are a winner, but you are a loser. <laughs> you got my point? If I found that you know you are cheating me, I'm a real winner. So I'll be able to you know block that particular point. But if I miss to find, if I if I couldn't pick the point, you think I'm a loser. But more than that, you are a loser. You think? I mean, you give a try. I told you the university. You can try to. You can learn or try to try to learn or try to cheat. Both options are free for you to take and try. Here also the same. You can think of cheating. I'm 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 always you know you are welcome, and I'm always encouraging you to cheat me. So do it. Uh, so the ten topics. I told you, you are going to come to the stage and you will be getting a nice printed, uh, it's not a handwritten one, a printed sheet and that will be uh, later converted uh, or cover, uh, put to uh, Moodle and these assignments will be uh, uh, done through Moodle uh, in a uh, few weeks down the line. But anyway, you are going to assess yourself and your peers. You are assessing, you are, you are, basic, you, you are grading yourself, your contribut uh, contribution compared to your peers and put a genuine remarks. You can, there also you can cheat. I don't mind. But if you are a genuine person, even you lose, you are a happy person because you know, you know, from your heart you know, you are doing the right. Even you lose. But the people who are sleeping will not be able to get the same experience. What's wrong with you actually? Third time I, I found you are sleeping. All 127, you couldn't sleep yesterday. Had a problem with your girlfriend. You couldn't sleep. I know. Okay, so like that, you will be handling assignment one. You can see assignment one here, two. You are start, the second will be walls, billing regulation, billing design process, and you are going here. That means after this particular point, you will be going to take the entire, entire, entire four hours, right? And uh, you will be basically covering ten topics. I'm going to give you the, uh, the, the to uh, actually basically the to topics are given. After my lecture, you'll be able to divide your batch into uh, ten groups, and you can pick the. Uh, you you basically know the uh, uh, the presentation topic. That is number one. Designment number one. Designment number two. You're going to start from today. Let's say we are, we have not. Let's say we have ten groups now. Group number one to ten. We are okay. The final objective, the outcome of this particular assignment one will be now known to you. I'm not going to talk about the uh, outcome of designment number one. Number two, you will be designing a two-story building for someone, right? From the stretch to the 3D model to the final permit drawing, you are doing everything. Now, who is your client and who is going to design? This, this is the way it is going to happen. Group number one will be the client to group number ten, right? Group number one should give them a, a real site plan. You have twelve people. I mean, out of these twelve people, at least you'll be able to find one from nearby place. So, give them the the site plan. With the site plan, you are going to give them a list of your brief. What are your requirements? Where you want to have your living room? What is the size of your living room? How many people will be living in the in the house? And what are the activities you are going to have? Whether you need to have a terrace or like that, you know, you are, you, you are going to talk with your designer, design a group, and you are developing your design brief. And there's another luxury you are going to get, that is from the very first week, you are going to work with architects and uh, interior designers from the very first week. I'm going to bring them down here because I have uh, PhD students who are architects and uh, uh, interior designers, so they are going to come and work with you. And it's a sort of another sort of a luxury you are going to enjoy now. 
because you are going to become civil engineers and I mean always when you go to the industry, the civil engineers and the architects are fighting. Architect will, will say something, even, even though it is really practical, engineers will say no. Engineers will say something, it will say, okay, we want to have a column here. The architects, I mean, they know that it's, it's nothing. I mean, it's, you can easily have the column, nothing will obstruct the, the view. But still, architects will say, no, I don't want to have that particular column. So that is the, uh, the conflict between the engineers and the architects in the field. So at least we'll try to sort that issue here itself. So you're going to get uh, the chance of working with architects, real chartered architects and designers. So you're working with an instructor, my PhD students. I mean, they are graduated people, they are reading for PhDs. So they are qualified people. So they are going to work with you. Group number one will be the client for group number 10 and group number 10 will be the client for group number one. Right, so from this particular week, from week number one, you can see week number one, you are going to work on this particular assignment till the final submission. Right, here the final submission. Okay, so you have the grouping and brainstorming today. So you, you, you identify, you have the group and you identify who's going to give you the, the plan, site plan. So it should be a nearby place where the group number 10 People should visit the site and get the, uh, the site description. It is not like, you know, you have the plan and you, you imagine uh, what will be the site condition and do the plan. No. You are going to physically go there and you are going to uh, visit the, the urban council people and you have to really complete a final submittable drawing set to the council. Difficult, but it will be a good experience for you. You need to go to the site, talk to the people, do a real site inspection, then you go to municipal council and see what are the building regulations which are really going with that particular site, get the documents set from the, the municipal council, then you should be able to talk with uh, other government officers. Don't go and say that I'm from Municipal Moreto, I'm doing assignment uh, for this particular subject, please help me. No, that is not the way. So you go there as a real client and say that yeah, I'm going to do a design for this particular land, please give me the documents and what are the building regulations, the street lines, Building line, you don't know, I know, I'm very sure you don't know what is, what is the meaning of building line and straight line. You should learn. This is not I'm teaching, this is your learning. That's why I said this is a little bit complicated. This is not little bit, it is totally complicated and different to the other lectures. So you're learning. This is not me teaching. I'm not going to teach you anything. I'm going to teach you only these things. Right? Only these. The rest, you can see, I mean, the, all these boxes are equally sized, right? So you take the take the entire bo the box and you take this piece. I think one one fifth of the the whole semester. I'm going to teach you. Then the rest is totally up to you, right? So that is the arrangement. So you are going to start the assignment today. You are going to make the grouping and you are going to identify who's going to give you the uh, the site plan. Then you, you have to work out uh, what sort of a plan you are going to build at that particular house. Every person will be a client and the other side is going to be a designer. You got my point? Every person going to be a designer plus a client. The client, I mean, let's say you are going to become an engineer, then you should know how the client will behave. Got my point, right? Unless you, I mean, it's very difficult to communicate with a person who doesn't know the subject. Sometimes it will be very, very easy. When you talk with the people who knows the subject, very difficult. That is the real, real life. But in, in, in engineering terms, talking to a person who doesn't know the subject is very, very difficult. Because you have to talk knowing what extent he, he knows about the subject, right? You should, you should talk with his language, not with your engineering terms. So that's why I said you need to know how a typical client talk to you when you graduate. That's why I said one, everyone will be a client and will be a designer. You are playing a dual role. Okay? So from this particular day, you are going to work with this assignment and finally you can see you are going to study about uh, uh, different softwares and mainly we are going to teach you Revit architecture because that can cover all the other the software. So the Revit teach the uh, the key software we are going to do here. 
and I, 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 uh, I put uh, four uh, weeks for that and you are going to make a physical model as well. You are here for one semester and you may have seen these architect students, they were carrying small models. Have you seen? No. Which one? This one, okay, that means you have seen. Right, so similar to that, you are going to make a physical model. So if you can challenge them, that's great. So give a try. And finally, you are going to make a finalized drawing for approval. So it's like you are about to submit the drawing set to the, the municipal council. So uh, if you are, when you come here, let's say the final submission level, you know the design concepts of each and every building element. Number one, I don't know whether, I mean, that is up to you to learn, but you are supposed to learn the design aspects of this building design process and application, not about the material, not about the, uh, or the elements. You should know the design aspects of each and every building element, number one. Number two, you should know about the sustainable design concepts. I mean, even the politics now sustainable, right? Everything is sustainable. I mean, if you don't know the sustainability and sustainable design, other university will be out. You will not be able to even go and contest for a Prajes about a Nagara Sabha at least. So you should learn about sustainable design. And not only that, you know how a client will think and you know how a designer should work with a client. So these are the aspects where you will be learning at this particular point. Over and above, you should know how to do a physical model. Let's say a person who doesn't, who, who can't understand the drawing, you should be able to make a small model and say, okay, this is what you are going to get, right? Scale down model. You have to decide the scale, you have to decide the material, you have to decide the way you are going to present the material, the, uh, the scale, everything is totally up to you. So you are going to do everything and finally you are submitting that on the 14th week. Now interestingly, if you miss one week, you will realize that the workload for the other weeks will be getting double. How you, are, how you can miss a lecture? One option is you are living in a lovely country where every month you are getting a, going to get a poor day. Poor day is one and there are thousands and thousands of holidays. So if you get a holiday on a Tuesday, you check your ta diary, you will be out, you are lost. If not, unfortunately, if you get some, get a funeral or something, if the entire batch is going to attend, you will be stressed because all 14 weeks are fully packed, right? No additional and nothing less as well. Okay, any problem? Any question? No. Do is still open. Do is open. I never uh, lock the door. So you can freely leave and and still. Uh, yes, about assignments, I, I told you. And favoring is not possible with the assignment number one. I'm not going to show you how I can pick the, uh, the favoring, but I love and like to see you are cheating me. That's the norm and the, the motto of myself. So you, you can give a try. Assignment two, you're going to do this until you finish it, a 3D model. And uh, these are the topics for group number 10. You can tentatively, you know where and which group uh, you will be. And I, I requested you to have four reps. I mean, the rep is the person who's leading the batch. I don't, uh, I should be able to pick the four reps. If you have reps, by knowing what? The rep should take a piece of uh, paper and write down. No reps. No reps, or the reps are not really suitable to be the, the reps. So the batch is at a real, real stake, you know, at a risk. You decide. So these are the topics, 10 topics. You are going to do group number one, the foundation wall, building regulation, building design process. And at the very first day, you check with your seniors, they will let you know who am I. I'm, I'm, a, very, I'm, I'm a very friendly person. I, I always love to keep this particular my, uh, smile in my face. 
but if I lose it, even myself do not know what I am going to do next. That is the real danger which I am facing, I, it is really an issue in myself. So, I does not, uh, I do not know what I am going to do next if I lose my smile in my face, a real disaster. So, do not let me to lose my smile in my, in, uh, uh, smile from my face, kind request. So, the communication, I always love and encourage you to communicate with me, but not in this way. So, if you have any doubt, any problem, you can talk to me and the door is always open. You can go and com come and I, I do not encourage people to come and say in my lecture, I am not a person who take attendance. I do not mind. I mean, if, if you can find the same no note set uh, in the internet, why you are just coming and wasting your time by seeing me? Forget it. You go and stay in the, on the board in place and you know, you learn it and try to get A plus. I am repeating, try to get A plus. I do not mind, I do not, I am not going to encourage anybody to come and stay in and sit in my lecture room. If anybody feel like it is a, a useless waste, a wasting time, you are free to leave. But do not disturb the people who are really have sort of interest to stay and listen. Do not disturb them. You can leave the class, right. Repeating the summary, do not change my smile from the space. Thank you. Right. You have 10 topics and you will be studying these softwares AutoCAD, 3D Max, Revit Architecture and CAD RC Detailer. They are available in my lab. Uh, we have, I mean, I, I told you the first floor, uh, just below these, uh, we have our division and in front of the division, we have the computer lab. So, all these softwares are there in the computer lab and also the research center second floor, you have the computer lab. Uh, I think, uh, not this uh, RC detailer, this is about structural design. I do not know whether that is really, really relevant to you up, uh, even now. But these uh, three softwares are available there. And uh, I, I, I believe uh, you can install the student version of all three softwares to your machine. And uh, I am going to have this, uh, have the computer classes here also. I know all of you does not have laptops, but I like, I, I mean I am not going to teach uh, the software, I am going to tell you what you can do with the software, learning is totally up to you. I mean we learn in the same way and you should follow the same. So I can't, I, I do not want to come and teach you a software, you know this button is for that, uh, the, uh, the mouse, uh, the uh, shortcut keys, I mean that I am not going to do, please do not ever expect from my uh, instructors to do that. They will come and teach you what you can do with these softwares, right? And how to use, uh, how to make use the software as a tool. Do not let the computer rule you, you rule the computer and get the job done, right? For that, you should be able to study yourself and understand the, uh, the relevant keys, uh, the relevant shortcuts, relevant, com re relevant commands for you. That is, that is divine. I mean that is always subjective, you decide. So, we are going to mainly focus on this Revit architecture uh, because that can, uh, that can work with MVP or uh, this, uh, uh, let us say, so not, not only civil, you have plumbing, electrical, uh, mechanical, AC. So, that again uh, embedded with uh, Revit architecture and you can do the, the costing with Revit architecture. You can do the, the rendering, you can make the 3D model, not even the 2D model. You can create the 3D model inside the, the Revit. Basically, you are working on a 3D model and you can get the dimension, uh, dimension of the sections, uh, uh, elevations, everything uh, at once with Revit architecture. No longer we do not use uh, AutoCAD, we do not use uh, 3D Max and uh, other softwares now because we have the Revit architecture is, uh, I mean, much more powerful. And we have the license softwares. If you want, you can get the, not really of you, if you want, you definitely should get and install the student version of Revit architecture. By the time I am going to take this Revit class, those who are having a laptop, you should be ready with Revit. So, you go and talk to Rukma, she is the, the technical officer and she will tell you how to get and install the Revit architecture to your lab. I know everybody does not have a laptop. When we were students, we have not had even a single laptop, but now I know 99 percent of your batch have a laptop, has a laptop. So, try to bring the laptop here, otherwise what uh, the other option is I can divide the batch into four and take you to a computer class and teach. So, I need to have 4 into 4, I need to have 16 
classes with Revit. It is not practical, you know, it is we have only uh, 14 weeks to do. So, everybody here, I request you to bring your laptop and you can see what they are doing and you can f follow uh, the person who is doing the, so uh, the software, right. So, that is what, if, what we are going to do and that is it for the day. Now, tell me, yes, almost done on time because I wanted to finish by 2.30, I have another meeting, right. Uh, who are the, the group reps now? One lady on building design process and uh, uh, elements, structural aspects. So, you go to the site and see how they have, you know, adapted these knowledge to the practice. So, you go and the last two uh, uh, groups, they should visit a real project. What I can do is I can give you, if only if you need a letter, I can provide you a letter saying, okay, these group will be visiting you for this particular subject, please support them. That is the maximum I can do, right? That is the maximum I can do. So, those two groups should go and visit. I mean, I am I'm, I'm going to give you a challenge. This will be a real challenge. I know you are not happy with me. That also I know. But those who, are, those who are not happy with me and those who really want to leave the subject, do is open. But those who are not happy with me today and those who wants to get the real challenge of being a good civil engineer, they can stay with me. I told you about my dream, right? I want to have one fourth of the batch sitting here, first few rows, to have a one-to-one -one discussion with me to learn about building design process. Not everybody, not all 128 people. My idea is not to be make perfect 128 civil engineers. If I can successful with making one good civil engineer, that is something for me. Then that may that that's in in a way, I'm paying back to the the country. Okay. Any question? So I was so perfect, right? Explain everything. Uh, I forgot to tell you, uh, this subject will be basically monitored uh, through Moodle. So, those who have not, you are all registered to the Moodle automatically, but those who have not yet uh, visited uh, uh, the Moodle, you have to go now because all these lecture materials will be in the Moodle uh, in very soon. So, I am going to put everything there and all the assignments will be uh, set there, the grouping will be done. Soon you make the grouping, you uh, give that to Anuradha, so she will be making the grouping and uh, she will be coordinating the, the Moodle. So, uh, uh, your assignments, submissions will be parallelly, I mean happening like you know, you, you have to have the manual submission as well as the computer uh, the online submission and uh, in a way actually this sort of a uh, uh, experiment we are doing because we are trying to make some of the facts, I know you are really, really busy not like us. We do not have any work, so we have we are supposed to come to the university, but you are not like that, you know, you, you are always busy, is not it? You are busier than us, huh? that is why most of people are not coming for the, the lectures. You are busy, you are busy with sleeping, you are busy with tuition, right, everything. I mean, I know, I, I respect you. So, I respect your busy life. So, we are trying to make some of the things available online. So, that is why I had to wear this mic and, you know, all the stuff and she, she is working with uh, the video ring all this stuff. So, we, we, are, we, are, we are in a learning curve, we, we got your point, we got your, we, we, we understood you now, right. It was a very difficult task to understand a student, we, we understood, I mean after a 10 now uh, say 6, 7 years, in my life uh, I was teaching here for now 10, uh, 10 years, almost 10 years. So, with, within that particular period I understood the student. So, we, are, we have to cater the client. So, you are clients now, right. You are, you are no longer the student, I mean you are a client. So, we understood the, uh, the client, so we are trying to cater the client. So, we are trying to change the, uh, the teaching mode because you are busy, you are really busy, you have only the night time to study, is not it? The rest of the time you are, you are really busy, I mean I know that, okay. So, make sure you are studying and get a A plus for all the subjects, we will make sure you get the material, right. Any question? Okay, good. So, uh, you do the grouping now 
and uh, once you make the grouping, the third week you should be ready with the client brief. To be ready with the client brief, you should know the land. So today you should be able to identify the person who is going to give the land and this week you can see you don't have any assignment. It's a nice week, week number two, no assignment. But the assignment is everybody should go and visit the site. Not within this four, uh, four, four hours, right? Within that particular week, the weekend or whenever, you should visit the, the site. Every week, you are assessing your team plus your peer team. Everybody, let's say 12, 12. So, everybody assessing 24 students every week. So, they should maintain a diary manually and in the, in the Moodle, we will open the Moodle for a uh, limited time. You have to go and grade the people. So automatically your attendance and everything will be marked, not by myself, by yourself. Again, please give a try to cheat us. Then I'll be able to rectify at the next class. Okay, so this is the arrangement. Uh, that's it then. So make the grouping.